Hi guys, Dr. Rahul this side. So today uh, we will discuss about a very important topic. Now I will not tell you about the diagnosis, I am showing you a chart. So first I will discuss about the conditions, right? Associated with this, uh, you can say disease. And uh, I will see whether you can diagnose the condition, right? So first you, you see this is the airway obstruction. In this uh, uh, syndrome we find the airway obstruction. We find infections uh, with different organisms. There is exocrine insufficiency, risk uh, with uh, diabetes and uh, with increased age there is risk of intestinal obstruction as well most importantly we find uh, the lung and sinuses being in, uh, involved with the infection inflammation obstruction sweat gland very important there is elevated sweat chloride concentration right and pancreas exocrine dysfunction with this word itself i think with the elevated sweat chloride concentration and sweat gland involvement i think you reached the diagnosis so yes you are right yes the diagnosis is cystic fibrosis a very very important topic right you already know that this is a very important topic for all uh, any in the, the uh, uh, national exams it's a very important topic for your uh, if, 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 even for your uh, board exams as well cystic fibrosis right so we'll discuss today about cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis right so first of all this is the autosomal recessive condition right autosomal recessive condition remember this one and it's an exocrinopathy affecting multiple epithelial tissues right the gene product responsible for uh, this condition is cftr gene what we tell uh, what we say as you know cystic fibrosis transmembrane conduction regulator gene or in short CFTR gene so first remember autosomal recessive condition exocrinopathy right and it is uh, the gene responsible is CFTR gene the CFTR gene serves as an anion channel right that uh, in the lumen of the epithelial cells that regulates the volume and composition of the secretion right so anyway just remember these three points also <coughs> If I say whether the cystic fibrosis is it a uh, obstructive pattern or a restrictive pattern? Actually, pulmonary studies shows that it is a mixed, mixed obstructive plus restrictive pattern. Both, right? So it is a mixed pattern, mixed obstructive and restrictive pattern, right? And uh, talking about the important associations, uh, if I say. Uh, respiratory manifestations what respiratory manifestations we can expect right uh, in this condition there will be hype uh, this copious hyperviscous copious hyperviscous uh, sputum right and there will be pulmonary secretions um, are copious and hyperviscous right and uh, there is obstruction of the small and medium sized airways there is a complex infection with staphylococcus hemophilus influenza pseudomonas right as you saw in the slide and uh, and also i am uh, discussing about the chronic sinopulmonary disease associated with the condition right chronic sinopulmonary disease right so actually this is a, uh, as i already mentioned in in this uh, mainly there is infection associated with uh, different organisms and pathogens like staphylococcus aureus hemophilus influenza pseudomonas right and there is chronic cough sputum persistent uh, chest radiograph abnormalities uh, that includes bronchiectasis atelectasis hyperinflation there is digital clubbing right wheezing and um, uh, nasal polyps may, may be you know are often seen nasal polyps right uh, and uh, different paranasal sinus infections right so these are uh, in short about the chronic sinopulmonary infection talking about uh, GIT infection uh, we can classify it as intestinal in intestinal we can find meconium ileus intestinal obstruction sometimes rectal polus but not that common right this two is then pancreatic insufficiency, recurrent pancreatitis, and hepatic. In hepatic, in liver, we find biliary cirrhosis, right? 
and in nutritional there may be failure to thrive protein energy malnutrition right edema right so these are few uh, associations right now the most important thing is regarding your uh, treatment purpose uh, the two recent you know the advancements that uh, recombinant human deoxyribonuclease dna is right recombinant human deoxyribonuclease is useful to decrease sputum viscosity because just now we mentioned the sputum remains hyper viscous in this condition so decrease the sputum viscosity we can use recombinant human uh, deoxyribonuclease other, other, otherwise the uh, medium to small sized you know uh, airways will be obstructed right so we can use this as a condition but the main treatment is uh, lung transplantation and obviously you can consider it as an option because in the setting of end stage cystic fibrosis uh, pulmonary failure hmm, uh, uh, develops and lung transplantation is a viable therapeutic option and it provides you five year survival rate right in the order of 60 percent and median survival rate is more than eight years so this is a considerable option we can consider lung transplantation obviously it is, an, it is a uh, it is a choice we, we can consider in the treatment right so remember these two advance advancements right so we will uh, <clears throat> wrap up the session with the revision of the cystic fibrosis so first i mentioned that uh, one second yes first i mentioned that cystic fibrosis is autosomal recessive uh, condition is an exocrinopathy cftr uh, gene um, you know is involved and is a, a mixed obstructive and restrictive pattern manifestations a copious hyperviscous sputum and there are sinopulmonary manifestations like uh, infection with staphylococcus aureus, hemophilus, and uh, pseudomonas. There is chronic cough with sputum production, and uh, there are different radiographic abnormalities like bronchitis, atelectasis, hyperinflation, nasal polyps, right? Digital trapping. But just remember, there is uh, sinopulmonary infection. It all comes under this term only, right? GIT infection. There is uh, meconemialias, intestinal obstruction, rectal prolapse, pancreatic insufficiency, hepatic. Uh, this uh, liver uh, cirrhosis. Nutritional is uh, you know, <coughs> put energy malnutrition. Anyway, so these are few abnormalities and treatment is uh, rec uh, as I told two advance, uh, two advancements. Recombinant human deoxyribonuclease to decrease sputum viscosity and lung transplantation is uh, considered uh, nowadays in the treatment because there is a pulmonary failure on the advancement of the cystic fibrosis so uh, if we do lung transplantation it provides <coughs> our uh, five year survival rate and median survival rate more than eight years right so lung transplanted is hence considered right and we can uh, see we can uh, talk a little about uh, this chart Second, yeah so of course you can see this airway obstruction and different uh, genes and this infection with uh, aerogenesis exocrine insufficiency all we have discussed risk of intestinal obstruction and there is bmi means uh, this uh, failure to thrive may be seen in the later stages and onset of age and di diabetes play important role and <clears throat> there is obstructive male infertility okay intestinal obstruction is there meconemialias i have discussed pancreas exocrine insufficiency liver cirrhosis we find lungs infections and uh, sinus infection will be there yes we have discussed this is the most important thing the diagnosis part this is here sweat gland there is elevated sweat chloride concentration with this line itself you can diagnose it as uh this is a condition of cystic fibrosis right so remember this is very important point sweat gland elevated sweat chloride concentration is diagnostic of cystic fibrosis right so with this i will conclude the session hope uh, it is beneficial for you and uh, these are the incidence rates as you can see right so anyway uh, we will meet uh, in another session right okay goodbye